Uh, you can probably tell from uh, the scene behind me that uh, the situation we're dealing with remains uh, fluid. Uh, we've had a number of flare-ups since we last spoke in the last hour, uh, and we expect that probably will continue to happen as we work to get these fires in what turns out to be two tanks under control. Uh, I had incorrectly uh, shared with you uh, last hour that there were three tanks. There are only two tanks burning. There are three tanks that are what we say impinged. Uh, they are threatened by the heat and the fire from the two that are burning. The two tanks that are burning uh, both contain ethanol, uh, an additive for gasoline. Uh, they contain or contained about 250,000 gallons between them of ethanol. Uh, the tanks that are uh, threatened uh, are con they contain jet fuel and uh, another tank of ethanol. Uh, a uh, correction from last hour, uh, the shelter in place remains in effect for the town of Crockett, uh, which is just to our north, and the town of Rodeo, uh, which is just to our south. In, in between, the town of the, the settlement of Tormi was evacuated early on in the incident, so it's been evacuated. Those uh, shelter-in-place uh, orders remain in effect for those two towns. I had correct, incorrectly reported that uh, Crockett was, uh, I'm sorry, Carquinas had been, uh, was under a shelter-in-place order, but I was actually thinking about the bridge. So um, the, the shelter-in-place orders remain in effect for the town of Crockett to the north and Rodeo to the south. Uh, they will be for, for the foreseeable future. County Health has teams out monitoring the air quality in both of those locations to, as well as this one. And uh, when they make a determination that it's safe to lift those, we of course will. Um, the uh, the uh, interstate highway uh, right to my front remains closed. Uh, and uh, there's been no determination as to when that might be opened at this point. A uh, number of concerns about that. One is safety from uh, these uh, tanks that are burning behind us. Another is air quality. So uh, Interstate 80 in both directions remains closed for the time being. As soon as we're uh, aware of when we can get that, when California Highway Patrol can get that open, uh, we'll share that as well. We continue to use uh, firefighting foam and uh, water to uh, try and bring the two tanks that are burning uh, under control and ultimately to extinguish those fires. Uh, at that point, we'll no, we'll no, be, no longer be a concern for the uh, adjacent uh, tanks that uh, are right now threatened by fire. Uh, those threatened tanks, we cool, continue to cool those with water in an attempt to keep them from becoming involved in the fire. Uh, we have about 42 fire uh, fighting uh, units on scene. Uh, and a lot of support piece, uh, personnel beyond that. I would estimate that we have close to 200 uh, people on scene, all told, uh, to uh, manage this incident. An organization called, uh, uh, sorry, an organization called PIMO, the Petrochemical Mutual Aid Organization, has arrived on scene. That's an organization that's made up of representatives from Chevron, Shell, Marathon, Philips, and Cortiva, and uh, their mission is to uh, arrive with uh, specialized equipment for putting foam on fires of this nature. And so they've just arrived on scene, and we're uh, we're putting them uh, in in service now in attacking those fires. Uh, let's see. Uh, from from County uh, Health, the air quality concerns are that. The, the uh, air quality right now in the towns that are under shelter-in-place orders, uh, because of largely the particulate matter uh, that's uh, originating from these fires, is uh, ranging, causing uh, conditions that range from unhealthy conditions for people with sensitivities to respiratory problems to actual uh, hazardous levels of particulates. It's been, it's been varying quite a bit. And as I mentioned, we have teams out there, the county does, uh, measuring that air quality right now, and we're getting uh, updates on that on a fairly regular basis. We'll uh, lift those uh, shelter-in-place orders uh, when it's safe to do so. Uh, one note uh, from County Health, uh, people that are experiencing, uh, of course, people should stay indoors uh, and out of the uh, air that's filled with these part particles, uh, but anyone, that's ex it's ex anyone who is experiencing respiratory distress should call 911. Uh, to have those medical concerns addressed. Uh, 
and uh, we have a very fluid situation right now. I think it's in a bit of a lull, uh, as it was when we spoke last time, and then it, then uh, the fire erupted again uh, right after we spoke an hour ago. And that's because the infrastructure that connects these tanks is damaged. Uh, fuel gets exposed to the air. It, the uh, foam blanket we have on it uh, gets disrupted, air gets to that fuel, and then we, call, we see these flare-ups. We're working hard to get it to the point where we don't have any more flare-ups, but at this point we anticipate we probably will have flare-ups for some time to come. With that, I'll take your questions. One, one tank did actually experience structure, structural failure. It did collapse. There are two tanks burning. Uh, that's a correction from the last hour. There were never three tanks burning. Well, we have firefighters, you know, firefighting is a somewhat of a risky business. We, as I mentioned last hour, we do our best to strike a balance. This is a defensive fire, but there are certainly large implications for the, the, fi the potential for a fire like this. So we have to figure that into the mix, uh, the risk uh, picture, if you will. Uh, we have firefighters down there. You can probably see them behind me putting water on, on those tanks to cool them that aren't burning and actually uh, continuing to attack the fires that are burning. Uh, it, it is a risky situation, but uh, we've done our best to calculate that and to keep our firefighter from, at a safe distance. Could you elaborate on the first couple hours of this fire, right? You guys No, that's not true. The first call came in at 1.50. Uh, we had units on scene, I would say, within five minutes, uh, and they immediately went to work on that fire. Uh, when I arrived at about about 30 minutes into the incident, we had uh, numerous uh, fire apparatus down there on those tanks in that tank farm uh, fighting that fire. And I imagine we've probably changed some of them out over the ensuing couple of hours that passed. Uh, but uh, we had firefighters on those uh, fires from the very beginning, or very nearly. Could you tell us a little bit more about those three other tanks that you say are threatened? Yes. What do they have? And when you say threatened, could you elaborate? Well, they're tanks filled with varying amounts of flammable uh, materials. Uh, they're, they're e they either have ethanol, uh, like the two that are burning, which we've seen burns pretty well, uh, or jet fuel. And so our concern is that we keep those cool and keep the fire, existing fire away from those, because the last thing we want is to exacerbate the problem by having fire in additional large tanks filled with volatile materials. Well, the question was regarding the earthquake last night at uh, around 10:30 uh, p.m. I believe in uh, in Pleasant Hill. Uh, it was a 4.5 or 4.7 earthquake, and whether that might be related to this. Uh, at this point, it would be purely conjecture. What I can say about that and about the investigation of the fire is that uh, in the last few minutes, uh, the decision has been made by the incident commanders uh, to bring in the ca uh, con fire. Uh, fire investigation unit, and they've begun their work to investigate the fire. Uh, they won't be able to do all of it till we get the fire contained and ultimately out, but uh, the Con Fire uh, Fire Investigation Unit will be investigating the fire, and, and my uh, best guess would be that we will determine the source of the fire ultimately. Well, there's a couple things going on there. One is uh, we have a blanket of uh, firefighting foam over top of the collapsed tank. Uh, and, uh, and so the idea behind that is to, keep, is to keep oxygen from the fire, deny the fire oxygen. Uh, and so what's happening is you're seeing these flare-ups because we're getting breaks in that foam blanket. Uh, the, uh, the heated fuel is being exposed to air, and of course that's creating a situation where it flares up. So that's what you're seeing there. Uh, my well, one tank is all, all but completely collapsed. So of course that one leaked into the containment area, the containment, uh, the secondary containment area around it, which is basically earthen uh, dikes. Uh, and so that tank's 
co contents are now in those earthen dikes. And that's what we're keeping the foam blanket on to do our best to keep it from flaring up. Uh, it was my understanding a couple of hours ago that some of the infrastructure that actually connects those tanks, the pipes, if you will, may have been damaged as well, and we may have been having some problems with leaks with that. I don't know the exact status of those, but I'll try and find that for the next briefing. Um, Steve, could you talk more about the special chemical neutral aid? Are those specialized firefighters? Uh, again, what kind of equipment, what are they doing? Are they on the ground yet? All of the... Uh, uh, all of the uh, uh, refineries and other uh, other uh, um, uh, oil uh, industry, petrochemical industry uh, companies that have a presence here in the county have some degree of firefighting capability. It ranges between them depending on the size of their facilities and what the risks are. Uh, each of these uh, organizations, each of these companies contributes to this organization. Uh, firefighters, specialized firefighters with specialized equipment to deal with fires like these. Are they from here? Are they based here? Uh, you know, I don't know that for certain. However, I would say, given the short time in which it took them to arrive, I would I would have to assume that they come from the uh, companies that contribute to that organization here in here in the area. That's correct. We have two tanks that are currently burning. Uh, we are, we are uh, cautiously optimistic that we are going to get the upper hand on them. But it's as you've seen observing this fire, the last these fires, the last couple of hours, uh, we've sort of had had our ups and downs. Uh, our goal is to get those fires contained and extinguished. Uh, and while we're doing that, and while we're seeing these flare-ups from time to time, we're keeping. Uh, water on the adjacent tanks to keep them cool so they don't become involved in, in fire themselves. When will Highway 80 be open? That's a good question. Uh, at this point we don't have an estimate on when Interstate 80 will be reopened. As soon as it's safe to do so we will. There's two considerations there. One is the safety from this facility itself uh, and uh, uh, what could occur here. That seems to be getting under control as the hours go by. Uh, the other consideration is the air quality, uh, which is something that county health is monitoring right now.